Hey YouTubers and welcome back to Tony the Technician channel and today we're going to be going into cheap or inexpensive ratchets compared to your more expensive ratchets <clears throat> and sometimes when you can use a cheaper or more inexpensive ratchet to win sometimes it might just be necessary to get a more expensive ratchet now that doesn't mean you have to pay an expensive price with me you guys might know i don't pay outrageous prices for my tools i always look for good deals and that's something that you have to do when buying tools you have to be smart about it you have to do your research especially with today's uh marketing there are so many different brands so many different options out there it's ridiculous and there's a lot of good quality tools now there are a lot of decent quality tools that you have to be careful with because a lot of companies might try and trick you and you might think this is a good price but a lot of companies overprice their tools like crazy especially a tool company that i'm going to mention craftsman might have had a good name back in the day really good tools they aren't what they used to be but they're still trying to charge the prices of these tools that are nowhere near the same quality but still charge those higher prices so today we're going to go into cheap and inexpensive versus expensive and when you might be able to get away with buying one over the other and save yourself some money and sometimes it's just necessary to buy that more expensive brand or tool um, but that doesn't mean you have to pay that price for it. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up. Leave a comment down below of your guys' favorite ratchet and what you guys might have paid for them. And uh, as always, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Let's get into this. So as you can see here, I have a variety of uh, quarter inch ratchets and three eighths ratchets. Yeah, I could go into half inch and all that, but I'm gonna keep it in between these. I'm gonna kind of give you a price point, show you the ratchets and kind of discuss when and why you could use a ratchet that's less expensive or exp inexpensive um, over something that's more expensive. And then sometimes where it might be necessary to buy an expensive ratchet. And in no way am I saying that the expensive ones are not of good quality. Uh, I'm just stating that sometimes it is not always necessary to have those expensive ratchets. And when you do feel the need that you have to have that expensive ratchet try and find the best deal possible they are out there no you might not be able to get them right away you might have to you know spend a little bit of time searching but it's worth it to save that money but either way sometimes let's just start off by saying if you're in the automotive field and you're working at a shop if you have a tool truck sometimes it's just a lot easier to deal with the tool truck and get that more expensive uh, tool just because it's easy for you to warranty or um, make payments and everybody's situation is different but when it comes to just buying your standard tools and you feel like you don't need to use the tool truck there's a lot of ways to go there are so many brands out there so I'm going to show you what I have I'll post up some pictures of some other brands that fall in this quality realm and everything and I really hope you guys enjoy so first up are the quarter inch ratchets that I have over here these are not all of my quarter inch ratchets but I included quite a few all of these are relatively inexpensive and really good quality and that's why I have them and then I also have a more expensive ratchet and it, it's great quality absolutely nothing wrong with it but would I ever pay full price for it absolutely not I believe a lot of these uh, name brand ratchets are extremely overpriced but um, sometimes it just can't be helped but it's up to you to do your research and find the best deals possible so first up is the gear wrench 90 tooth this was actually recently released um, in 2020 and I've actually been really happy with it. I haven't used it quite as much as the 120 XP or the 84 tooth or the Tekton 90 tooth, but overall it's still a really good ratchet. I just haven't had as much use with it as the others. Um, it's really smooth. It's nice that they have a 90 tooth. Overall, a really good ratchet. This runs 20 to $24. So not too shabby uh, and you save money when you buy it in sets really good quality I've had really good experience with the gear wrench ratchets next up is the Tekton 90 tooth this is a new design from Tekton as well I believe in 2019 and this is the fixed head and the semi-locking flex head it has detent positions so that's nice and they actually recently released a 
long version of their flex heads as well, which is a nice touch. I really like the new design from Tecton. They've updated from 72 to general generic design to this design, which is much more sleek, stronger, and just all around a better ratchet. These are going to run 20 to $22, whether you get it fixed head or semi-locking flex head. So really, really inexpensive for a really good quality ratchet. I have reviews on all of these, so if you're interested, go ahead and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. You'll find a lot of reviews on these ratchets. Then next up is the Gear Wrench 120XP. This is the flex head version. I also have the fixed head. Um, and this is going to run $26. And it's just nice to have that semi-locking flex head I love the 120XPs, they're great. If you don't know about them, they're a 60 tooth main gear and dual poles giving you 120 positions. So uh, a low arc swing with really good strength. So a really good, inexpensive, really good quality ratchet there. And then last up for the quarter inch is the Snap-on TL72. And I bought this when I was going to college and I got the student discount because I would never actually pay full price for it because this runs $110 through the website and it could possibly be higher on the tool truck. So in no way would I ever pay that amount for a ratchet, especially when these have held up just fine, some of them in daily use. Um, and I believe the other ones that aren't in daily use would hold up just fine in that environment as well. So it's definitely not necessary to have snap on, but let's say you bought one of these other ratchets, you know, there's a lot out there. You got Pittsburgh, you got Icon, you got Capri, Husky, Cobalt. I mean, there's so many other brands out there. Let's say you bought one of those ratchets and it just wasn't, you know, it might've been performing the way you wanted, but say you ran into an issue with it or something, uh, binding or a handle breaking or something like that um, from rough use. And you were just tired of doing that warranty, you might go ahead and you know, purchase something that you don't have to deal with that anymore. But that's all personal preference and everything, but I would never pay full price for it. But all around a fantastic ratchet, very smooth and love this, but you're going to pay for it. The other thing that I noticed a while back about the uh, Snap-on is they don't recess their switch. So it's very easy to switch, but then sometimes that can kind of be a pain because it might switch in the middle of a job. Whereas all the other ratchet designs, the common thing is to recess the switch so they're not sticking up extremely high and able to be caught on things to switch directions. So that is one thing that I noticed about the Snap-on that I really don't care for. I do like how easy it is to switch, but that can also be a con as well. So definitely not necessary to purchase the highest end, especially if you're not in day-to-day -day use. If you're a weekend warrior or somebody that does even a lot of work around the house, let's say you, you work from home doing a lot of uh, jobs for people, most of these, well, all of these are gonna hold up very well, but most of the brands out there, I'm not gonna say all, but a majority will hold up really well in uh, pretty good use. So just keep that in mind. Don't let others influence you. I'm not suggesting that you purchase any of these. I'm not saying, hey, you have to have this. I'm just kind of showing you what is available. So these all run roughly in the $20 range. This one running in the $110 range. So big difference there. Moving on to 3 8 These are the standard length, roughly eight inches each. And here I have the Tecton flex head, and you can also get it in fixed head. This is going to run $28. This is once again, the new 90 tooth design. So you get a higher tooth count. You get that semi-locking flex head and uh, all around a really good affordable ratchet. And I love that it's now 90 tooth instead of the standard 72. Then I have the Carlisle. So this was 28. This is the Carlisle and it is part number Romeo 38 Tango Delta and it is a standard 60 tooth ratchet, but still very smooth for a 60 tooth. Um, and some people prefer a lower tooth count. I prefer higher, but it's still all around great use. This uh, was used every day, day in and day out and holds up perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. Uh, great ratchet. And this runs roughly $21. So very affordable and very reliable. And then next up is the Silver Eagle and this is the quick release. I don't care too much for quick release anymore, but that's just personal preference. Um, this ratchet just seems a little bit bulky. It's a little heavy. It's a 60 tooth ratchet as well. And uh, it is like Matco's 
cheap version, kind of like Bluepoint is to snap on. So this is going to run $32, so a little bit higher than these two. And uh, nothing wrong with this ratchet, it's just not what I prefer. And then when you actually get into the Matco 3H drive ratchets, it can range big time from 105 to 190. And most of Matco stuff is not even made in the USA. You know, it's uh, a lot of, it shares a lot of tools with many other brands. So you're really not getting anything too special. Of course, Matco makes, you know, their own handle, or I shouldn't say makes their own handles, but they have their own design for their tools. I don't buy a lot of Matco personally because I can find the same quality in other brands for a much better price. So that's just my personal preference. And then moving into the last ones, this is the Tekton new 90 tooth semi-locking flex head that I told you about. Quick release, you can get it non-quick release. And I love the length to it. I love that they added the long flex heads to their lineup. And then I have the Snap-on FL80, amazing ratchet. I absolutely love this ratchet, but I would never pay full price for it. Once again, I picked that up with the student discount. And that was, $35 for this Tekton semi-locking flex head. Great quality, absolutely love this ratchet. And then the Snap-on, this is the long version, not the extra long, but the long version. And uh, the Snap-on is going to run $130. And that's just for this one. It ranges much higher if you get anything with a flex head or a comfort grip or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. The main point of this is to state that if you're not in day-to-day -day use, it is absolutely not necessary to purchase the high-end Snap-on Matco Mac Cornwall. I'm not saying don't buy them, I'm just saying if you do, I hope you're performing a lot of work to justify that price, and if you are buying them, I hope you're find, finding the best deals possible because that is very important when dealing with tools in any way, whether professional or uh, DIY work or weekend warrior, whatever you wanna call it. It's best to do your research, figure out what you like and find the best possible price. Don't buy the first thing you see, or let's say you find this Gear Ranch 120 XP, the first place you find it, don't, don't buy it. Go and make sure that it's not available somewhere else for cheaper um, or anything like that because some sites do crank these uh, prices up. Like I mentioned earlier, Craftsman, they have a 3 8 long, uh, flex head ratchet and it runs $70. I, Craftsman, you need to bring those prices down on a lot of your tools. You are not what you used to be. You don't have that USA made stuff anymore. Uh, they really need to work on their prices because I am not buying any of it for that price. Uh, you are not getting snap on quality stuff, but you're almost paying that snap on quality price. So Craftsman needs to cool it with that pricing and there are many other brands out there uh, that do the same thing, but Craftsman is really up there with their pricing. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, please make sure to hit that thumbs up. If I forgot to mention anything uh, important that you think would be a good tip, please drop it down in the comments for others. And then as always, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. See you guys next time.